Hey friends, welcome back to a video. If you've been here before and you're looking at the title of this video, you might think, hasn't she already done this? Or is this a new drills video? I'm gonna let you know it's not. So over the past few years, I've gained a lot of subscribers. And in that time, I have created over 700 videos. And with new subscribers, a lot of my old videos are bound to get lost in that ridiculous number. So I thought just to bring some of them back up to the front, some that people really enjoyed, especially beginners, we do some more flashback Fridays. Now, not only for that reason, but as you guys know, I'm a mom of two and I am running this business here on YouTube and on Patreon and with Craftmo with our boxes and I have to keep up with Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. And it's a lot, a lot for one person. And I find myself burning out at times. So while I love the idea of trying to keep up with my three videos a week, I think what I might start doing once in a while when I'm feeling that burnout, because I don't want to lose my passion for this. I don't want to push myself to the point where I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to start bringing some of my old videos back to the forefront on my channel. So those of you who may have missed them are going to get to see them again or see them for the first time. That makes more sense. One of my biggest series here on YouTube were my drills videos, and these are perfect for beginners, but also people who have been painting for a bit and just need a little bit of a refresher and guidance on what to practice. So I am bringing back my playlist of redo drills on how to paint leaves and flowers, how to hold your brush, load your brush, all that fun beginner stuff. So if you haven't seen it before, here is our first video. And if you have, maybe you'll watch it again and be inspired to practice a little bit more. Thank you guys all for your constant support and understanding. I really appreciate you all being my own personal cheerleaders when trying to navigate this business and a family. It's a lot, but I love that I have you guys sticking by my side constantly. I couldn't ask for a better community. So with that said, I will have brand new tutorials at least two times a week, but for some Fridays here and there, I am bringing back those old ones, which are just as good in my opinion. So let's jump into our first video. Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna tell you what materials I'm using today. Today I'm painting on Canson watercolor paper, which is my cheapest watercolor paper. You do not need anything high quality for this. I have my Windsor Newton Professional Watercolors in my palette, but I also have my Cotman Pan Set. I'm gonna be showing you both, um, just how I would use both. What I don't recommend is using tube paint straight out of the tube. We tend to use a lot more paint than we need, so make sure your paints are dry. I also have a few different brushes with me. You don't need multiple brushes, but I'm just gonna show you the brushes that you're gonna see in this video. I have my Craftmo size 10, my Princeton Snap size six, and I also have Wonder Forest brush in a size eight. They're all round and we're ready to go. Okay, so this should have been a part of my drills video series, but I didn't think about it. About it. Um, and then I had a couple questions from beginners asking, how do I load my brush? How do I hold my brush? And I thought, you know what? I should have addressed this. And then also working with my niece, I noticed a few things. So I'm gonna go over different things today. And today we're just practicing. So get out your cheap paper, your watercolors, your brush, and let's get started. So as you can see, I've written down some things that we're gonna test out on this paper, just to get you familiar with how much water you should use and how you should hold your brush and what that is gonna do for your paintings. Okay, so the first category I have here says, a little bit of water on your brush and dry paint. So as beginners, sometimes we don't really know how much water we need on our brush and how much paint we need on our brush. So here's our water. Um, and this is one thing I see beginners do a lot. They have a completely dry brush. They dip it in their water once like this, and then they put it into paint. And I want you to try that and then paint on your paper. See how it's dry there? It, you're getting that dry brush action. action. And that's because there's not enough water on your brush 
and there's not enough water in the paint. The paint hasn't had enough time to activate and your brush hasn't had enough time in water to soak up the water in the bristles. So that's when you get this dry brush action going. Now it says, try a dry brush in a puddle of paint. This might be a little bit easier. So my brush is a little bit wet. I'm just gonna wash this off. And I'm gonna try with another brush that's completely dry. So when I say a puddle in paint, what I usually mean is when there's a little, I want you to create a puddle. So I'm just going to, either you can do this with a spray bottle or you can actually take your brush with water. I'll just take another brush and you put droplets into your water so it creates a little puddle or you can activate your paints like this until there's like a little puddle in your paint. So I'll just show you what that looks like. See how there's a puddle there? That's giving the paint enough time to activate. So once you pick up that paint, even with a completely dry brush, which I don't recommend, I always recommend that you have your brush nice and wet, which I'll show you in the third column here, but it's still a little bit better than just dunking it once and having a dry paint. So there's a puddle here. Okay and you can actually use that puddle to paint. It's still dry because we need our brush wet, but it's a little bit better. You can pick up a little bit more paint that way because there's water. So what I want you to remember is that water is an essential part of watercolor painting. Now we're not as used to that if you paint with acrylic or maybe oil, but watercolor needs water. Now we do run into some problems when we have too much water, which I will address or I have addressed in multiple water control videos, but I don't want you to be afraid to use water. Now for our next column, it says wet brush and puddle in paint. So this is what I want you to think when you are starting to paint. I want you to wet your paintbrush. You can swish it around like this. You can dab it on the bottom gently. Get that brush nice and wet. And then when you start with dry paints, you're gonna take that sopping wet brush and you're going to put it into your paint and create a puddle. So you have a really nice wet brush and a puddle of paint. Start activating it by swishing it around. Now look at the difference. This is a different color, but look at the difference. I can go, I can keep going with this, okay? You have tons of water and tons of paint, which is gonna help you paint for longer strokes and it won't get all dry like this up here. Now this is a dry brush technique which you can actually use in painting. So it's good to practice this too so you know how to achieve this if you wanna add a little bit of texture into your painting. But essentially what we want is this, okay? So you can use that for a technique, but this is what we want. Let's try it again. So let's wash off our brush, get it nice and wet. Add a puddle, here's a dry paint. And we're gonna activate it by swishing it around a bunch. So you have that little puddle. Hope you guys know what I mean by like a puddle, okay? And then you can start painting. Okay, see the difference? That is what you are striving for. So I want you to make this chart and try practicing this. Okay, so now we're gonna try and activate with different amounts of swipes to test it out. So I'm using my pan palette for this. The paints are all completely dry, but I am gonna use a really wet brush. So make sure it's nice and wet. Soak up that water with the bristles. And the first one says, activate with three swipes. So pick any color you like, and you're just gonna swipe three times. One, two, three. Okay, so you can see there's a good amount of water because our brush is really wet, but the pigment is fairly light. Let's try another color just in case it's the pigment. Um, I feel like blues are usually really nicely pigmented. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. See, that's a little bit more pigmented. Now it says activate with eight swipes. So we're gonna activate it a bit more by swiping eight times. Let's pick a new color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, even though that's a light color, it's pretty pigmented. You see how that works? The more you activate it on your brush, the darker the color will be. Let's try another color eight swipes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that one's still a light color, but it still is quite activated. Now we're going to activate with a puddle. So now I want you to create that puddle to see the difference. So let's actually create the puddle in these two to see if there's a difference. So I'm going to put a decent amount of water in there. 
Okay, and the puddle looks a little different on these ones because they're pans, but we're really gonna swish it around and then paint with it. It's a little bit brighter. Let's wash off our brush. Activate this one a bit more. See how much darker that is? The weird marks happening on the stripes are because of the paper. It's not a, a ton darker, but it's not as pigmented of a, a color. Let's try one more color just to test it out. Okay, so creating a puddle. Really getting that color on there, but making sure there's a lot of water. Okay, you're making the puddle on the paint. And look how pigmented that is. Okay. What I have seen beginners do is they don't create that puddle and they have a semi-wet brush like we did up here. And so there's no water dripping off my brush and they go right into a color and they try and pick it up and they get that, you know, that really dull instead of vibrant color. And that's not what you want. So really try different ways and just use different amounts of water, Try wetting your brush differently. Try the dry brush and see what happens. I want you to test it out. It's gonna get you familiar with what you need when you're painting. And once you practice this over and over again and you just paint more things regularly, it will become second nature and you won't even need to think about it. So the next thing I wanna talk about is what if you don't want a super pigmented color? You want a light wash. And a light wash is something I ask you to do actually quite often. And I'm gonna to switch to my other palette. Now for this, it's still easiest to create a puddle and really activate that paint. So these are all dry. Let's create a puddle in this red and really activate it. Okay, so we don't want this bright, bright, bright red. Okay, we want something a little bit more dull, a light wash of this. There are two ways to do it. You can either just add a bunch of clean water and water it down to get that light wash. Okay, I'm gonna do it, I'll do it right here. That's one way to do it. Or the way I do it is I will load up my brush with the pigment so it's nice and pigmented. And all I do is just wash it off my brush, dry it against the side. And then I also have a light wash that way, okay? So that's two different ways to create a light wash. Okay, so now that we know how to load our brush, we're gonna talk about how to hold our brush. And I've been asked this question before and I was just thinking, you know, hold it like how you would hold a pencil. But then I thought about the different holds to get different strokes and I, a light bulb went off and be like, oh, okay, that's, that's what they meant. So we're gonna try three different holds and I do these in all of my paintings and I don't even notice. The first one is a vertical hold and this is great for thin lines. So I'm just using my Wonder Forest brush. I'm gonna grab any color and you're gonna vertically hold your paintbrush, okay? Now I have some water dripping off the end if you have too much water on your brush, just swipe it against the side, okay? And we're gonna vertically hold our brush and we're gonna use really light pressure and we're just gonna practice doing really thin strokes like this. Okay, and that's a vertical hold. Hold it however is comfortable to you, how you hold a pencil or a pen or whatever, but just hold the paintbrush vertically. Okay, and you can just practice that. What I suggest when doing light pressure holds, um, don't move your wrist, move your arm, especially when you're trying to do straight lines. Um, like I'll show you, it's hard to move your wrist, but if you actually anchor your arm down and kind of swipe it across the page, that wasn't a good example, you get straighter lines and they don't need to be perfectly straight. Okay, so that's the vertical hold. And again, you can just dip it right into that little puddle you get more pigment or you can water it down, wash a little bit off your brush, swipe it against the side. Oh, had a little bit more, too much water on my brush. And if you're ever worried that you have too much water on your brush, just tap it on your paper towel like that. And it will take some of the pigment off or some of the excess water and you'll have your light wash. If you are stuck on water control, I will link all the videos I have under that. Right now we're just focusing on loading our brush and the different holds that you can do, okay? So practice your vertical holds, try different ways. You can even do like wavy lines, which I tend to lift my arm off the paper 
but you're still having your brush in that nice vertical hold. The second one is like a 45 degree angle hold, which I use for thick to thin lines, um, heavier pressure. So let's choose a different color. I'm going to activate my permanent rose, create a little puddle in there, swipe it around a bunch. Okay. And we're going to hold it on a 45 degree ang angle. And I'm going to use heavy pressure and I'm just going to swipe it across the page. Now, when you are holding your brush and you are actually pushing down, I'm just going to talk quickly about the parts of the bristles. We have the toe or the point. We have the belly of the brush, which is the middle, the biggest part. And then the part where the, bris the bristles meet the ferrule, that's called the heel. One thing I've noticed with beginners, beginners tend to paint very gingerly and they like are afraid to put pressure. Okay, see the difference of the thickness in that line? What I want you to do, don't be afraid, really push down to the heel. Not so hard that you're wrecking the bristles, but give nice firm pressure to get those thick lines. And don't be hesitant to put paint on your paper. I see that a lot with beginners too, Hesit hesitancy. You're afraid that if you put the paint down, you're gonna mess up. That's how you learn, okay? Go for it. I really want you to just practice these lines and just go for it. Put that pressure right down, not right to the heel, not where it's like scraping the ferrule, but nice pressure, okay? And if you have a good brush, it should bounce right back. That's also a test to see if you have a nice brush that is good quality, okay? So that's what I want you to do. Um, you can also practice those strokes that we did in our floral drills video where you go heavy to light pressure or light to heavy pressure. So light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Sometimes I'll alternate by doing 45 degree vertical, 45. Okay, so 45, bring it up. Okay, like that. Just practice over and over again. I'm telling you these drills may seem funny, but you know what? It'd be even really nice to create patterns of stripes just practicing these different holds and you can still create a really nice piece of artwork. Okay, so there's the 45 degree hold. Now, the next one is a horizontal hold and that's basically when your brush is right on its side and you're using as much of that surface area of the bristles that you can. And instances where I do this is when I'm blending something out. So I'm just gonna show you quickly. Let's pick a different color. Let's activate our yellow. Okay, so when I talk about blending something out, I mean you're laying down your color and you wanna blur that hard edge out. So I'm gonna completely wash off my brush, no pigment. I'm gonna just dab it a little bit on my paper towel so it's not too, too wet. And I'm going to touch the edge of that line, <laughs> hold my brush at a horizontal angle and let that color bleed. I left it a little too long. See how it's dry over here? That's also, you can tell that it's not the best quality paper. Let me try again. I have to work a little bit faster. Wash off my brush, dry it, touch that edge so it bleeds out. Okay, so you can see that really the edge of that brush ends right here. It's wet from here to here. And that gives you a really nice soft edge. Let me try a little bit faster. I'll try with a darker color. Okay, so we do this really nice bold line and we wanna thin that or blend that edge out, wash off your brush, dry it just a bit, hold it on a horizontal angle so you get enough space for that color to bleed. And even though you don't see the edge where it bleeds, it gives that pigment enough room to move as far as it can. Okay, and then you get a really nice soft blend. <clears throat> this works way better on higher quality paper because it stays wet a bit longer. So as you can see here, it blends out really nicely. And as we get over here, it starts to blend less just because it dried faster here. But on nice, good quality paper, it should blend all the way. Let's do it one more time. Let's grab a blue or yeah. Okay, nice and dark. Wash off your brush, dry it a bit on your paper towel. Okay. 
See that blended edge? And you can always wipe off your brush again if there's more pigment to blend it out even more if you want. You can drag it down, but it's usually at a horizontal kind of hold like that. And you can always load up your whole brush and just do a horizontal hold with dark pigment and get a nice thick line. That is totally acceptable too. But just thinking about it, this is how I most often use a horizontal hold, hold but you can definitely do it that way too. So there you go, that's how you load your brush, that's how you can hold your brush to get different effects, different textures, different lines, all of that fun stuff. Practice over and over again, even just fill up a whole page of different lines, just getting used to the amounts of water and the different holds, and you'll be a pro in no time. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're looking for other content on here. Go back through my playlist. I've created playlists about flowers, beginner stuff, mixing, color mixing lessons, um, color matching. I just, I have a ton of stuff on here. Like I said, over 700 videos. So go back through my channel, take a look, and I hope you find something that you like. And for extra content, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook for tons more. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.